I'm at the Cinema Summit at NAB 2015 again, and I'm with, Bar I'm with Barco and Goran from Barco. And one of the big demonstrations that uh, Barco uh, showed us at the, the sh at the Cinema Summit this year was 2020 on the screen. Now, there's been a lot of talk about 2020, and um, there's a presentation that you gave specifically um, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, when in 2020 mode, due to the very extreme primaries required by 2020, do you have to run the laser only in 3P and not 6P? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And um, due to that, obviously the speckle must be a lot worse. Your speckle mitigation issues must not be as effective. Is that, is that the case? Uh, so 2020 is the, the white color gamut, uh, the recommendation 2020, which, yep. uh, which is um, uh, uh, defined by the broadcast industry. Uh, it specifies uh, really uh, sharp and narrow um, uh, laser primaries. That's right. Uh, our projector uh, is a 6P projector, so it's uh, it, um, it's um, capable of producing REC 2020 only when run in 3P mode, which is fine because REC 2020 com uh, content is, uh, is coming mostly 2D, and for that you have enough light. Uh, on the speckle issue, uh, going from 6P to 3P mode uh, would probably increase the speckle of the projector uh, by a factor of uh, 40%, factor of square root of 2 uh, to, be, to be precise, uh, but uh, uh, our primaries are, uh, are already despeckled pretty well. So it's not that we go from 6 to 3 laser wavelengths, we go from 6 times whatever the secret sauce is there per primary uh, to uh, divide that uh, by 2. Uh, what we are showing at this NAB is our laser projector in combination with um, uh, a new, also exciting technology from uh, Real D, which is uh, a kind of a stiff uh, screen which is vibrating. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll do a video yeah. on that too. That's yeah. a very, very interesting yeah. technology. So the vibrating screen, uh, and I've seen it for the first time in my life here, is uh, basically reduces the speckle to zero. Yes. All of us have come up with noses to our screens and tried to see any speckle. We couldn't see any speckle. So. Uh, this combination is really exciting because uh, then you can do P3 at REC 2020 and not see any speckle. Yes. So, yeah. Yes, uh, I must admit, I, when I saw it, I definitely noticed that uh, there was no speckle. But then when I heard it was actually actually three primaries instead of six, that's when I went, ah, well, that's very interesting because yeah. uh, it's just very difficult to not have speckle when you are such fine primaries going on. So it's interesting to see that there are like real world implementations like the screen is still prototype from my understanding but it should be released from real um, real D soon but you do have products that you can buy mm. very soon to implement this if if you want to because um, mm. 2020 is a big issue with the consumer electronics it's where the TV manufacturers are pushing everything because they pretty much just want something else to sell a new TV on but a lot of the stuff shown at the cinema summit this year was a lot to do about the viability of going 2020 um, and there was an interesting talk on meta meta I can always get to meta, tongue, metameric metameric failures. failure yeah. um, does Barco have any um, do you have an opinion on that yourself um, and just 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 quickly let's describe meta metameric yeah. failure basically when you go to such fine primaries um, like everyone is different height when you get to just that very single and not a wide range of primaries the fact that we are different heights, also we see colours a little bit differently when they are that fine. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing a grade or, or watching something with a red that's that fine, he will see it different to how I will see it. And so that's a big problem. So what's your opinion on this problem and is it yeah. viable? What, what, what's going to happen with that? Yeah. So uh, this is a kind of uh, problem that, in our opinion, if you want it, you can make it a problem. And... Uh, but honestly, when it comes down to it, uh, just for general purpose, uh, you know, uh, like for cinematic viewing of laser projection in the cinema, uh, we don't actually think it is a problem. And we have uh, several things uh, that point into that direction. Uh, we have done, like even two years ago, uh, a series of demonstrations to creative people at Burbank with our 6P technology, uh, a side-by-side -side demonstration with a Xenon projector. And, um, you know, the general feeling there is that the metameric failure is actually not a problem. We've done it with, with uh, dozens of people there. We've also done the evaluations ourselves, matching at, uh, the uh, projectors uh, to Xenon, and in theory, yes, you could still see or even measure uh, a bit of different things, but um, the 
uh, response of creative people, of content makers that see their content on the laser projector uh, is that this looks great. We just had this comment today, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, creative people, the directors that was presenting a new movie, he was pretty nervous of seeing his content for the first time on a laser projector, he wasn't here to test it up front, so he saw it for the first time during the demo and he just said it looks good for him. So uh, we're confident that um, the metameric uh, variability or metameric failure uh, is going to find its place into the scientific community and we're more than willing to uh, support the effort to, uh, to kind of reduce it or to, to have the um, uh, uh, thing understood better and ideally solved uh, if possible. But we're also confident that uh, for general presentation in, in cinemas, uh, it's not an issue uh, when you put content and watch it on a laser projector. Can you comment on, because um, I know Barco is a very popular brand for Post in some parts of the world, mm. so then you must get a, a bit of feedback on, um, or have some sort of knowledge on um, people producing content in these new colour spaces and high, high dynamic range. Can you, can you help us out to, is there any idea of time frame? When will we actually start <coughs> seeing pictures like this on the screen? Any idea? Um. I know it's a hard question. But it, it, it's a hard question. I think uh, experimenting and playing with Rec 2020 uh, is, uh, has started. So we have uh, seen, uh, it was some content which was presented, it's not cinematic content, but you know, uh, uh, just uh, shots to Te actually... Testing content, yeah, uh, yeah. Testing content. I think that uh, color grades of certain movies, uh, or at least parts of movies, have been done by studios in, uh, in uh, Rec 2020 color space. Uh, but what we think is that, um, and this is kind of a general feeling, well, some people are excited about Rec 2020, a lot of people fail to see the benefit of only that new feature uh, for, for laser projection. So yes, you can get a little bit better colors, but uh, it's only that is not enough. So what uh, we see that people are probably looking into a, a wider palette of, uh, of improvements, including contrast, including uh, color gamut, including high brightness, uh, especially in 3D, and uh, put, all, put all of that together. Okay, so, so really, this will come along with the whole new story, not just part of the yeah, story. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I actually believe that's most likely the case because it's every one of these parts of the stories is a lot of effort and having yeah. to redo you know we're yeah. going to put all that effort together and try and put yeah. it all together so it makes complete sense um, and I've got one last question on this color you mentioned brightness yeah. um, one of the things I saw in the demonstration of your projector was very much you did a, a test between um, 40 foot lambents and oh let's get it right 48 nits and 100 nits right yeah. and I must admit the brightness to me was I felt the brightness was more important than the color. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it it really made me. That's what I that popped to me. Not so much yeah. the color, but the brightness. So, hundred. You know, where do you think we will land in cinema when we move to a new brightness level? Yeah. Um, well, let me tell you what uh, our experience is uh, testing this laser projector on not sufficiently large screens in, in, in many cases. Uh, forces us to actually put more more foot lamberts or more uh, nits on screen than uh, the what is prescribed. Yeah. yeah. So in many cases, we actually show to the content at 30 foot lamberts or 100, 102 nits yep. on screen. And the general feeling, uh, definitely my personal feeling, is that it looks great. Yes, me too. No, just bringing up the the, the, the content from 14 to 30 uh, looks great, and going down to 14 for me is like it looks kind of dark. Yes. Of course, you know, it has Zero a color time for yeah, 14 and yeah. so on, but just uh, uh, I, from our perspective, we definitely support uh, increasing the brightness uh, levels from um, uh, 48 nits to, uh, to 100 nits uh, for 2D content. Uh, for 3D content, it's, a, it's another story. Yeah. We have shown 40 foot lamber 3D content. It was graded. Yeah. We, could, we can do it on the size of screen and it looks great. But then remember that most of the exhibitors are having troubles to even reach 4.5 foot lambert in 3D just because of you know brightness, efficient 3D systems, uh, cost. Uh, so going from 3.4 to 14 foot lambert in 3D is a huge step in brightness. It means that suddenly they need four to five times 
yeah, more so brightness need, on the same screen. They need one of these, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Pure and simple. Yeah. So and even then, it's limited um, uh, to certain screen size of maybe 17, 18 uh, meters, meters. Yeah. And not much more than that. So I think that, uh, however exciting and however good the content, 3D content looks on 40 foot lamet 3D, uh, we think that the exhibition community is going to find a middle way uh, that goes somewhere between four and a half and 14. And what this middle way is going to be, is it six, is it seven, is it eight, nine, or 10, or 11, I don't know. Uh, it's still to be decided, but um, I'm, uh, it's yeah, going to be a practical thing. That's for probably true, but I'm yeah. more like, uh, uh, 3D's fine, I'm not, I'm not a big 3D person. I'm, yeah. I'm, I prefer just my 2D to look as best it can. Yeah. Um, and, and on the 2D and, and probably going to 100 nits is probably where we're going, because that looked fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. it's not, 100 nits is not, out of this world in no, terms of what no. projectors can do even yeah. some xenons could easily get to that on some small sure. screens yeah. Yeah. Um, but the issue with that though to me is that um, the implementation of the, the the light engine and the dmds etc if we do raise the light level to 100 black, the black will go up the black will go up yeah that's true and this is where uh, uh, getting a a high contrast is uh, that's is exactly right yeah. yeah so we're not we're probably not going to see 100 you know, until we get a new light engine type design that can give yeah. us a better contrast is that is that what you would say is probably most likely the case uh yes i think uh going for 100 nit uh it looks good on bright scenes i mean on general content it will look good even if you don't increase the black level yeah but then design uh, keeping the same projector the same brightness level for dark scenes will uh, will probably uh, be problematic. Uh, will be problematic for, for black so i agree with you that uh, going for higher contrast or high dynamic range uh, light engines or implementation of light source is something that um, uh, definitely has to take place yep. also standardization also a yes, bit more of uh, of research as to how uh, brightness projected brightness in the auditorium will impact your contrast. That's, that's true, it's that's a, true. There's a lot of talk story. about yeah. um, how um, dynamic range, of course, is connected to the mm. contrast ratio, and the contrast ratio is directly connected to how much ambient light is in yeah. The, yeah. the room. So, It's kind of disappointing when yeah. you see the figures, I think, um, uh, they were presented uh, earlier on this summit. Uh, you know, you, you get down, you start with figures of 100,000 or a million to, to one, and you get down to it was 358, 358 to oh, yeah. one on screen actual but, yeah. it was kind of <laughs> I was very surprised disenchanting to, uh, to that, see that those, yeah. that was the, I think that was the average contrast yeah. ratio you get in the average cinema after you put the the, the floor lights the exit lights the exit and, lights and for example and actual people in the room yeah yeah because yeah. the light the bounces off the screen bounces off your faces and typically or your clothes and that just lights up the screen and it lifts the the, the, yeah. the black level and then and anything that's below that black level in presentation you just can't see yeah so, so uh, I think the uh, rather than um, going for a very high level of uh, projector contrast I think the sensible thing to do uh, is estimate what is the sensible projector contrast that we need to achieve for uh, real situations. We cannot expect that every cinema will uh, be able to purchase a million uh, dollar system that will be able to, to redesign their auditorium for uh, uh, you know black seats and, 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 and whatever. That's right. Uh, so uh, doing this type of research up front is going to make a lot of sense uh, in order to design uh, the right product uh, for the application. And this is part of Barco is going to do. We're not going to. You're not going to see us at CinemaCon. No, you're not going to rush out with a product that hasn't yeah. been put through all yeah. these conditions yeah. and all these situations and simulations. Yeah, exactly. So, because yeah. it's one of the thing I like about talking to the Barco people, the Barco staff, is because you're very free with the information, and you usually know. It says we tried this. We've already done that, and so you've always got some really good. Um, knowledge to, to contribute back to the yeah. questions I ask. So yeah. it's one of my favorite reasons for talking to Barco because of that. So thanks, Goran. Appreciate you, your work and hope to see you again next year. Um, yeah. Too bad you're not coming to but CinemaCon. Yeah, couldn't make it this year, but uh, I'll yeah. uh, try to make it next year. Okay, mate. That's, that's, that's James Gardner, okay. uh, Cindy Tech Geek, and Goran from Barco at NAB um, 2015, the Cinema Summit. Bye for now.